With my woman, cause she couldn't help me with my mind. People think I'm insane because I am frowning all the time. <sighs> God, it's hot in here. All day long, I think of things, but nothing seems to satisfy. Think I'll lose my mind if I don't find something to pacify Can you help me? Occupy my brain Oh yeah Someone to show me the things in life that I can't find I can't see the things that make true happiness I must be blind Make a joke and I will sigh and you will laugh and I will cry Happiness I cannot feel, a love to me is so unreal Can't get a breath And so are you hear these words telling you now my state I tell you to enjoy life, I wish I could, but it's too late. This song's an obligation, you have to sing it. You must sing in this song, at least once. Damn, wow. Thank you, good night. Well, how are you guys doing? Oh, God. Here, I'm going to fix this really quick. Um, so I was planning on coming on here, um, doing some spooky stuff. Oh, you know what? I probably just messed up something. Um, hold on one second, guys. So I can pull up in another window because it didn't. It wasn't uh, cooperating right the way I had it just a second ago. Um, but anyway, I was going to come on here and do some spooky stuff for Halloween. And then I saw that G-Man went live. So I jumped on that real quick like. Um, let's see. One second, guys. Give me, be patient with me for just a second while I get this set up. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Now, let me pull it up for him, and we're going to start out and watch what G-Man had to say. It wasn't a very long stream or anything, but it was worth watching, so here we go. <clears throat> All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the uh, Sowing and Reaping YouTube channel, and uh, I'm over here in Pennsylvania and uh, Scranton, and um, just looking at what the work when I 
was gone. Um, and there's some rumors going around saying that G-Man helped Shanny and Rev again, which is not true. I'm really mad at those guys. What you see going on between us is, is real. It isn't fake. And um, I'm going to show you guys the place. So The quality is really not bad, in here, guys. For what I understand, they're not in here. Okay. Uh, let me see something here. Let me see something here. Do, 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 do. They're not here. <laughs> so they're not in there. That's where the foundation is. I'm going to go up the stairs. Can't believe how clean it is in here. They really did a good job this time. Just got to paint out. Okay. So apparently... You know, there's been rumors going around that um, he bailed them out of uh, the predicament they were in with the oil spill and everything at the hotel. So he's doing this to prove, I guess, that um, they aren't there and that he's not helping them. So, Okay, so they're not in. Let me switch the camera so that you guys can see. Okay, so they're not in here. This is when Rev wow. did that famous... Stop talking about my wife when he was standing right over there. Uh, 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 not... I guarantee, like, see how clean that looked? Do you know that never looked that clean when they were living there? Not a chance in hell. In here. Not a chance. Uh, that's my book bag. Not in here. Not in here. Let's go check the room upstairs. This is the door, of course. Nobody's here. Oh. Nobody's Gee, man, here. That blue. I just cannot believe he painted that house blue like that. That blue. I mean, never in my life have I seen a house that color. Like, it is hideous. Hi, guys. I see you. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Tiggy Bear. Hi, Sabella. We are Vultures. Barbie. Shav Thirst. Lovely Leech. Krista. Single Dad Life. Yeah, all you guys are here. Hi, Nick. So glad you guys right. are coming to hang out. Let's just take a look at these filthy out. Oh, God, I, this is what I went. This is what I'm doing here. They want me to rip up these uh, this carpet. I'm gonna paint the doorway over there because somebody did some work around the door, so some paint's got to be done down there, and those woods got to be put down there. Anyway, touch up work. And this is the room that they were staying in, and they are not in here. How are you, Shani? <laughs> no, nobody's here. So I can stop the rumors saying that G-Man's helping them. They're not there, but I guarantee you the scent of them is lingered. You, you, they might not be there, but I bet you can still smell them there. I'm not. What's going on is legitimate. That's where William stayed. That's where Zachary stayed. This is the bathroom. The lights still in here don't come on. They need to chain bubs. Yes, we are vultures. Exactly. And that would have actually been cute. To have the door that blue and then have, or even maybe in the shutters be blue and then the rest of it be white or cream or, or beige or brown, you know what I mean? Something like that. But the whole thing, that bright blue is just, whoa. Like I, I can only imagine maybe if you lived in like San Francisco or something, like maybe there it would be um, cute or like on the beach, like for a beach house. But in that kind of neighborhood, no way. You know, the neighbors are probably like, what the hell? They got to look at that all the time. Hi, so, Silence Ledge. Y'all should have seen this Hi, tub when, when they were living here. Oh, my God. It was gray. But anyway, this was the room William oh was God. staying in. Nobody Bright in here. Let me check the closet see if they're hiding in there. Nope. Not in here. Hey, man. We know they ain't hiding in the closet. <laughs> Shanny can't fit in the damn closet. I literally just got here. So let me see something here. Uh, not in here. That TV's been sitting there forever. I need to take that thing down. So let me see. I need to fix that. Okay, so there's nobody here. Okay, maybe they're in the roof somewhere. Nope, they're not here for the rumors out there. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but it's not worth no $1,500 a month that he's trying to say. St. Jimmy is helping them again. Now it's dark up here, so I got to cut the light on. So y'all got to bear with me a moment here. I just realized it could be up here. I'm up here in the dark. All right, let me... Yeah, me neither. We all thought it would look a lot worse. Or something like that up here. I wonder if they get the place back. So, anyway, look. Hi, Zach. So, they're not up here. Not in the attic over here. So, oh, they're not here. Ooh, so that attic looks spooky. Everyone can stop 
with the rumors saying that G-Man is helping them again. I haven't seen him. Fun- wouldn't it be funny? He's like walking around up there in the in in the attic. If he just like fell through the floor, that's probably messed up. That I think like that, but that's what I think. I'm like watching him walk around, just waiting for him to go boop right through the floor. I'm gonna try to find out where they're at. Let me go downstairs. I'm gonna try to find out where they're at. Yeah, they're probably somewhere in this town somewhere. I'll find out. Just brother. gotta ask around a little bit. I and, hear uh, it. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go back upstairs. Shani can't get up to the uh, Dragon, I don't not. know if you're watching or not. Hold on. Let me go back up here a minute. That was stupid. I wonder if they threw this thing away. I want to show y'all something here. Hold on. He's going to show us something, guys. Okay. So the air fryer I was telling you guys about. That's it right there. Well, hold Hi, on. Chelsea. That's the air fryer right there. Uh, what I might do is put that somewhere where Drag can get to it. Or um, that's a lot of their paperwork. A lot of that smells on, on their paperwork. Ew. And then there's the air fryer there. Damn. You mean to tell me that even the paperwork smells? The paperwork smells bad? Jesus. That is some kind of stench. If it's absorbed into the paper, good lord. Uh, that was supposed to be anointing oil. And that's the lowest cows of the year. <laughs> Krista. Krista said, oh, Jesus, that roof looks like... Oh, hold on. That roof looked like it's held together by termites holding hands. Oh, God. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right, Joe. Paper can be absorbent, so... Yeah, and cat, fee, cat pee especially. Work, which I am the proud Hi, new Angela, owner. Of. How are you doing? One of these days, I'm gonna take inventory and show everybody what exactly was theirs when they came here. What I have now. So, this is the tomahawk that he had here. They are talking about me and my threats, please. Yeah, what? They had this. I gotta show you them. I gotta show you the machete and the sword he had here. I think I got the sword though. That bat right there was something he was gonna use. Oh, it was this. The bat. Let me show you guys. Do y'all something remember here. when Rev was in jail? And Shani was like, you know, going with the whole he's abusing me and has abused me thing. That she tried to say that like back in the day when he drank and stuff that um he like threatened to would threaten to hit her in the back of the head with the bat and stuff, which I thought was completely horseshit. But now <laughs> there there's actually a bat up there. Is that true? Do you think that he ever uh, swung that around towards Shani? I highly doubt it. It's but, pretty sharp. Yeah. If Shani says you know, it, it's, it's pretty right. sharp. This sucker right here is not dull. I don't know. If one of you want it, you can have it because I don't want it. Let me see. What? Total is gems this, over there, Shani. You obviously it? never used that. Wait a minute. I should cut the light off because I'm going back to the hotel soon. Well, I got me a room at the micro hotel under an alias. That's why I don't care if y'all know what hotel I'm right, at. Right, Sabella? Um, that I'll be staying at. So hold on a minute. Put this back on me a minute here. Yeah, so I just wanted to prove to everybody that I'm not helping them or nothing like that. But G Man, here's the thing. This proves that they're not there, right? It does prove that. Kind of, I guess, because for all we know, they could just be like out the front door somewhere waiting to come back in. But um, even though this proves that they're not there, it does not at all prove that you are not helping them financially. I hope that you're not. If you're watching this, G-Man, I really hope that you're not. Stay strong. Don't feel bad. Don't feel guilty. You don't owe that to them. Let them stand on their own two feet or they're never going to. Ever. And they'll just never learn. They're going to always expect that from you. And you shouldn't be doing that. You are you should be worried about your own life, not taking care of two grown adults. So do not give them money, G-Man. I beg you, do not give them money. Like that. So, yep, not helping them. Stay strong. I just got to do some um, painting in here and some minor stuff that I don't want to pay nobody to do. I got to do myself. But their bed was there. Oh, look at the floor. The food was there. Looking. And the food was there. The stains. And um, the TV There's... was there. And obviously, all. Did you see those stains, y'all? Let me go back a little bit. The stains that are on the floor. Ain't still nobody there. do. I gotta do myself, but their bed was there. There's one stain right here. There, the food was there. And look at these stains over here. 
He needs to just rip that carpet up, dude. Call it a day. Because I guarantee you, if he's if this if the male has absorbed the smell, that carpet has absorbed the smell. There. And the food was there. And um, the TV was there, and obviously all that stuff is gone now. They they actually threw away that TV, huh? I wanted them to keep it. I told them not to throw away their TV. One of the mic stands that they didn't even want that they wanted me to save for them. Ridiculous. I love this purple and white that I did in here. Absolutely love it. It's better than this beige and boring brown that I got here. Uh oh, see who's outside. Uh oh, who's outside? I heard her sign. Shannon Rev show up. This house must be a celebrity a little bit since considering he was on the news. <laughs> oh Lord. Okay, so just, this house is a celebrity considering he was on the news. Well, I know one thing, it wouldn't be hard to find with that damn color. You drive down in that area, you'd find that house easy as heck. You just drive around a little ways and oh, way down the street. There it is. There it is. It stick out like a sore thumb. Let's check my mail here. It's the mailbox. Here. Uh, American Water, gotta pay that bill. All right, hold on a minute, guys. I gotta look at this. Hold on. I have to say, that house American does not water. look as bad as what, on the inside at least, it doesn't look as bad as I is. thought it would. You're surprised they didn't leave fleas? This is for yeah, me too, Garrett. They might still have, we just aren't seeing them. What is he doing now? All right, this looks important. Let me put this back in the mailbox. I don't know what this is. Janie, if you're watching this, you got some uh, certified mail here for you. If you're watching this. Uh, but I got American Water. That's something for Norristown. Whatever the heck that house is so. mod rich blue. But they're yes, not here. That's the whole point of doing this YouTube video. So you can stop with the rumors saying that Janie is helping them because he's not. I'm legitimately ticked off at them. And... I'm pretty much finished with those guys. So, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Why did you support them for so dang long? Uh, you didn't see my mail. I just showed you that I had mail. That's all. That's all I showed you. That house actually got some nice features to it, though, like that crown. I just wanted to prove to you guys it wasn't here, because a lot of you were saying that. Well, not a lot of you. Not a lot of you. Some of you were saying that they were still here and they're not. So I wanted to make this short video there. to show everybody that they're not here. I didn't think they were there, but I think that they're somewhere and that he could still possibly be financially helping them. Because, I mean, but then again, maybe because of the situation with the hotel, maybe that they, they put them up somewhere. Maybe legally those they had to do something like that. I don't know how that works out, you know? But, I mean, he wasn't paying, so I wouldn't think that they legally were obligated to do anything since he wasn't current on you know quote unquote the rent or or the fee that um they were supposed to be paying for that getting weak hi Miss Annika how Shani you Shani should have never made that video dog. Shani shouldn't have said the stupid stuff that she said flower sky. she will learn from this they were hiding out in the motel room I didn't know that you guys got videos for that because I can't find nothing on YouTube I did see a news, another news story about the hotel thing, the or the motel thing, and what it said is that they that there some people have left, but it said some people are still there and still packing up stuff and leaving. So they could possibly still be there. Well, there were some people, Lubis, leaving comments stating that um that I was still helping them and I wasn't. I'm very happy about how clean this basement is. Let me. Turn this light off. No, I'm on. Been working all day. I'm gonna go to the hotel and get some sleep. You know, cool behind the house. I gotta. I'm gonna put some oil in that furnace tomorrow. Put some oil in that furnace tomorrow. This place is cold. Now, after seeing this place, which I'm sure it, he's done some work to it and stuff, so it may not have looked this good. But the fact that. G Man got that house for a dollar. For a dollar, you guys. I mean, the lot itself, even if you didn't you could tear down the house, and the lot itself would be worth way more than that. But the house is not really that bad looking at it. You know what I mean? 
he he definitely made out on this deal. Definitely made out. That was very stupid on uh, Rev and Shani's part. Mainly Rev's part. Very stupid. Thank God I ain't got to stay here. Let me see. Um... Right? It has good bones. Exactly. All right. So, so anyway, I'll be um, taking a look at a video when the original eviction happened on this particular channel. Y'all be getting my perspective on what happened uh, when some of the claims that Shani was making. And I'll actually walk through the house and show you what I had to do when they cut the electricity off and they cut the water off, being all mean to me and everything when I was here the first time. All right. So see y'all later. Well, I guess that is that. What do you guys think? Did that prove anything to you in your minds? Or do you say it doesn't, doesn't really prove much, just proves that they're not there, or at least, and they're not there right now? Yeah, he did put a lot of work into that house, didn't he? Okie dokie. Well, that was not that eventful. Um, do any of you guys need to see that again? Do you want me to play it one more time through before I move on to something else? Did any of you miss it at the beginning? If you want me to, I can play it one more time. Yeah, replay it. All right, I'm going to play it one more time before I move on. We're going to do some other stuff after this but i will play this one more time in case anybody wasn't here in the beginning because it's not a long video it's very short hello everybody welcome to the uh, sewing and reaping youtube channel and uh i'm over here in pennsylvania and uh, scranton and um just looking at what the work when i was gone um and there's some rumors oh, going welcome. around saying that G-Man helped welcome, Shani and Rev again, which is not true. I'm really mad at those guys. What you see going on between us is, is real. It isn't fake. And um, I'm going to show you guys the place. So they're not in here, from what I understand. They're not in here. Okay. Uh, let me see something here. Let me see something here. Do, 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 do. They're not here. <laughs> So they're not in there. That's where the foundation is. I'm gonna go up the stairs. It's can't bad quality right there. now. Like, so you can't really tell. But wasn't he staying in the uh, basement for a while there? That does not look like it would be a very comfortable spot to be. That basement it looks pretty cold and damp. They really did a good job this time. Just got to paint now. They, okay, so they're not. Garrett, in they really do deserve to be on the street. Hi, six up. How are you doing? Yeah, I mean, I honestly, I really do believe that. Like, there's part of me that always wants to feel guilty and say, oh, well, I don't I don't want to wish homelessness on anyone or whatever. But it's like, it with them, nothing else is going to wake them up, like, to realizing they need to get their shit together. Like, but I just don't look for that to ever happen. I don't know. Like, honestly, looking at that motel and the way that it looked and everything, if that wasn't enough already to wake them up and go, okay, we need to do something so we're not in this situation anymore, then it's like, nothing's going to do it. I mean, nothing is going to do it. Let me switch the camera so that you guys can see. Okay, so they're not in here. This is when Rev did that famous stop! Talking about my wife when he was standing right over there. Uh, not in here. Uh, that's my book bag. Not in here. Not in here. Let's go check the room upstairs. There's a door, of course. Nobody's here. Nobody's There's here. That ugly right. blue. Let's just take a look at these right, filthy. Right, oh, got it. This is what I'm. This is what I'm doing here. They want me to rub up these. Uh, this carpet. I gotta paint the doorway over there because somebody did some work Hi, around Renee. the door. How are you doing? So some paint's gotta be Hi, done down there and those woods gotta be put down there. Anyway, touch up work. This is the room that they were staying in. 
And they are not in here. How are you, Shani? No, nobody's here. So I can stop the rumors saying that G-Man's helping them and not. What's going on is legitimate. That's where William stayed. That's where Zachary stayed. This is the bathroom. The lights still in here don't come on. They need to change bubs. So, y'all should have seen this tub when, when they were living here. Oh, my God. It was gray. Ugh. But anyway, this was the room William was staying in. Nobody in here. Let me check the closet see if they're hiding in there. Nope. The bathtub, right. a.k.a. the litter box, right? We know that's the way they like, they like to... Uh, care for their cats is just to let them use the use the tub for that here i literally just got here so let me see something here uh, not in here that tv's been sitting there forever let me take that thing down so let me see I need to fix that okay so there's nobody here okay maybe they're in the roof somewhere nope they're not here for the rumor is out there saying gmail is helping them again now it's dark up here so i gotta cut the light on so y'all got to Bear with me a moment here. I just realized it could be up here. I'm up here in the dark. All right, let me. Because I wonder what would happen if I died or something like that up here. I wonder if they get the place back. So anyway, look. Did he just? So not... wait, did he just say I wonder what would happen if I died up here? Hold on, I gotta hear that. Up here. Again. All right, let me. Because I wonder what would happen if I died or something like that up here. I wonder if they get the place back. So anyway, look. He said, I wonder what would happen if I die up here when they get the place back. What a random thing to think. Like, okay. So they're not up here. Not in the attic over here. So. Oh, they're not here. So everyone can stop with the rumors saying that G-Man is helping them again. I haven't seen them. I'm going to try to find out where they're at. Let me go downstairs. I'm going to try to find out where they're at. Because they're probably somewhere in this town somewhere. I'll find out. Just got to ask around a little bit. And, uh, oh, wait a minute. Let me go back upstairs. Uh, Dragnet, I don't know if you're watching or not. Hold on. Let me go back up here a minute. That was stupid. I wonder if they threw this thing away. I want to show y'all something here. Hold on. Okay, so the air fryer I was telling you guys about. That's it right there. Well, hold on. That's the air fryer right there. Uh, what I might do is put that somewhere where Drag can get to it. Or um, that's a lot of their paperwork. A lot of that smells on, on their paperwork. And then yeah. there's the air fryer there. The smell is on the paperwork. Uh, uh, that was supposed to be anointing oil. And what? that's the Lowell's Cows of the Year. Work oh, with wow. the proud new owner of. Oh wow. <laughs> they left that behind, eh? Uh that was supposed to be anointing oil. And that's the Lowell's cows of the year. Work with <laughs> that's a part of history, right? I am the proud new owner of. One of these days I'm gonna take inventory and show everybody what exactly was theirs when they came here, what I have now, so this is the tomahawk that he had here. They're talking about me and my threats, please. They had this. I gotta show you the I gotta show you the machete and the sword he had here. I think I got the sword though. That bat right there was something he was gonna use. Astrid says that at 652, you hear Rev cough in the background. Well, interesting. I'll make let's see where I'll make sure I'm listening for that. It was, it was this. Let me show you guys something here. It's pretty sharp. You know, it's just pretty sharp. This sucker right here is not dull. I don't know. If one of you want it, you can have it because I don't want it. Let me see. Total gems over there. Shannon obviously never used that. Wait a minute. I should cut the light off because I'm going back to the hotel soon. Well, I got me a room at the micro hotel under an alias. That's why I don't care if y'all know what hotel I'm at. Um, That I'll be staying at. So hold on a minute. Put this back on me a minute here. Yeah, so I just wanted to prove to everybody that I'm not helping them or nothing like that. So, yep, not helping them. I just got to do some um, painting in here and some minor stuff that I don't want to pay nobody to do. I got to do myself. But their bed was there, the food was there, and the, and the stains are still there. 
Look at that nastiness. Food was there. And um, the TV was play. there, and obviously all that stuff is gone now. They they actually threw away that TV, huh? I wanted them to keep it. They threw it away. I told them not to throw away their TV. Wow. One of the mic stands that they didn't even want that they wanted me to save for them. Ridiculous. I love this purple and white that I did in here. Absolutely love it. It's better than this beige and boring brown that I got here. The bed bugs are still there. Uh oh, let's see who's outside. Hold on a minute. Uh oh, he says someone's Reverse. outside. This house must be a celebrity a little bit, since considering he was on the news. <laughs> Check my mail here. It's the mailbox. Is here, so. uh, American Water. Got to pay that bill. All right, hold on, a minute, guys. I gotta look at this. Hold on. American Water. I don't know what this is. And this is for Shani. What is this? Oh my God! I did hear that. Are you kidding me? This is for Shani. What is this? <gasps> what was that? That's somebody coughing. And this is for Shani. What is this? What the hell? Okay, I heard that. So is this place fucking haunted? And this is for Shani. What is this? Dude, that's a cough. That is a cough. Somebody is coughing. He said, did somebody show up? Like, he acted like somebody was there. But uh, let's hear it one more time. And this is for Shani. What is this? Yeah, I mean, somebody's coughing. It could be the neighbors, I guess. You know what I mean? If he had the door open. Um, but that's definitely interesting. Definitely interesting. And this is for Shani. What is this? Wow. I don't know, guys. It's a cough. I just don't All know right, where it's coming from. This looks important. Let me put this back in the mailbox. Very interesting, though. So, Jenny, if you're watching this, you got some uh, certified mail here for you. If you're watching this. Uh, but I got American Water. That's something for Norristown. Whatever the heck that is. So. God shot. But they're yes, not here. Trainer. We know you're in there. <laughs> That's the whole point of doing this YouTube video. So you can stop with the rumors saying that Jimmy is helping them because he's not. I'm legitimately ticked off at them and I'm pretty much finished with those guys. So, oh, okay. Does anybody have any questions? Sabella says um, that he usually travels with one of his relatives and he has claimed it was haunted. Interesting. So he's claimed it was haunted. Now, just to debunk some of this though. G-Man can't drive, right? He doesn't have a license or anything, does he? So is it possible that somebody drove him there? And that's the person maybe that's like standing outside? And they might maybe they're standing smoking a cigarette or doing something outside and, and they coughed? Because he's not, he can't, does he go by himself? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, you didn't see my mail. I just showed you that I had mail. That's all. That's all I showed you. Oh. Give me a second. I just wanted to prove to you guys it wasn't here. Because a lot of you were saying that, well, not a lot of you, not a lot of you. Some of you were saying that they were still here and they're not. Hi, Jenna. So I wanted to make this short video to show everybody that they're not here and G-Man's not getting weak and letting them in here. Shani should have never made that video. Shani shouldn't have said the stupid stuff that she said. Oh, she will learn. why are you... Poor, I, I honestly, like, feel bad for him at times because he feels like he's got to defend himself. You know what I mean? It's like, who cares if people are saying that you did? If you know you didn't, then what does it matter? You know what I mean? But no, he's got to get on here and prove it because, you know. Learn from this. 
Okay, normally he rides the bus and then catches an Uber. So maybe it's the Uber driver or something out there. Oh, well. I didn't know that. You guys got videos for that? Because I can't find nothing on YouTube. Well, there were some people, Lubis, leaving comments stating that um that I was still helping them, and I wasn't. I'm very happy about how clean this basement is. Let me turn this light off. Oh, hang on. Been working all day, and I'm gonna go to the hotel and get some sleep. You know, cool behind the house. I gotta. I'm gonna put some oil in that furnace tomorrow. So somebody's gonna have heat. Put some oil in that furnace tomorrow. Tomorrow, this place is cold. Tomorrow, Thank God I ain't got to stay here. Let me see. Um, Where right. does G-Man so, live? So anyway, Not there. I'll be um, taking a look at a video when the original eviction happened on this particular channel. Y'all be getting my perspective on what happened. Uh, when some of the claims that Shandy was making and I actually walk through the house and show you what I had to do when they cut the electricity off and they cut the water off being all mean to me and everything when I was here the first time all right so see y'all later and that's it guys that's his little video um someone let's see shiny just asked uh can we talk about when Shani was arrested a year ago what would you like to talk about about it? Are you are you saying do you want to watch the video or something or um what would you like to see? I hadn't planned on doing um shanty stuff. I was gonna do some spooky Halloween stuff. But you guys might rather watch Shanty stuff anyway. You're confused, Tiggy Bear? What's confusing about it? Or just trying to figure out if they're there or they're not there? <laughs> Silence Ledge. The video of her getting arrested is definitely funny. Spooky? You're for spooky stuff? That's what I think we should do. I think we should, like, give Shanny stuff a break. And that older stuff will always be there for us to watch whenever, you know? Um, Shiny says, I'm curious about what the charges were didn't see the full video and I'm just curious about what happened exactly. Well, it just in a short summary. Um, they went to the movies with the kids. Uh, Shani and Rev proceeded to get hammered, drunk. They start arguing in the movie theater because Rev did not want to. They went to see Detective Pikachu and Rev didn't want to do that because he didn't want to see a kid's movie. So he was mad. Shani's trying to hold his hand in the movie and he's jerking away, doesn't want to hold her hand. They're arguing. They get home and then Rev wants to go to Taco Bell to get a Baja Blast. I'm, I kid you not. He wants to go to Taco Bell, get a Baja Blast. Shani doesn't want him to leave. They start fighting. She smacks him in the face, whips him with, with a fetish whip. She calls the cops on him. The cops get there. And the cops take her to jail <laughs> because he had marks all over him and she admitted to slapping him in the face. And, um, yeah, so it backfired on her pretty badly. <laughs> um, and she was arrested and she was taken to jail for domestic violence, right? I, I believe that's what the charge was, was domestic violence. Um, but I'm actually going to be reviewing the arrest video, not tonight, but another night um, from, from one of my episodes with my husband where my husband reacts because he's never seen it. So all these like, you know, big Shanny moments in, in Shanny history, we've been going through each one and he's been reacting to those videos. So definitely be on the lookout for that because that's going to come up. Um, but for now, I think let's watch, let's do a couple of these spooky videos that I, found for you guys see if you like them in honor of halloween let's see okay um i don't know if i should give a trigger warning i'm going to just in case um because this first one is going to be um possession 
demonic possession. So if you're not uh, if you're not into stuff like that, if stuff like that gives you the creeps, if what you might want to not watch this next part because that's it's going to be all about that. Um, let's see here. All right, here we go, guys. Y'all ready for this? Whether you believe in them or not, demonic possessions can be classified as a strange phenomenon that has occurred in practically every culture for thousands of years. Modern technology now allows the world to document these supposed possessions in a way that history has never led us before. Take a look at these potential cases of demonic possession and let me know if you think evil spirits can take control of our own bodies against our will. Oh, and I'm gonna let me drop the link for this because this is a um, awesome YouTube channel. So definitely check out their stuff. There's the I dropped the link for you guys in the chat. Chills. Chills. Here we go, guys. Number ten, the televised possession. Did you know that a real exorcism was aired live on television in the early 1990s? ABC aired The Exorcism on their new show, 2020. It covered Gina, a 16-year-old girl living in Wellington, Florida, who had been in and out of psychiatric wards after seeing demons. It soon becomes clear early on that Gina's supposed demons aren't going out without a fight. First, the priests literally have to hold her down. They even insist that she will levitate if they let her go. The rough handling only seems to make Gina even angrier for a while. Soon she calms down long enough to briefly talk about her situation. Apparently, ten vicious demons are taking turns controlling her every day, she says. Two of the demons she named were called Zion and Minga. Whether or not Zozo was one of the ten was never revealed. Soon after mentioning them by name, her possession kicks into high gear. God the Father. God the Son. God the Spirit. Dude, I don't know if it's real or not, but this kind of thing has always really, like, gave me the creeps. Like, it really does. She looks very intimidating, especially for such a young country girl, but the raw hatred in her eyes wasn't enough to deter the priest from going through with the exorcism as- I didn't hear about that, Krista. The poor people that lost their lives at a Halloween event in South Korea. Is this something that happened recently, or- Land. They recite prayers while she recites prophecy. <laughs> Lovely Leech says, Rev's neck thing is a demon. You got a point. You know what's crazy is like back in the day, you know, they would think something like that was demonic possession. Like we think that's kind of like funny now or whatever. But back, back, back a long time ago, they would have, they would have thought that was demonic possession. They really would. Prophecies of war and destruction. One priest describes simultaneously feeling the power of God mixed with the power of evil as the supernatural forces fought each other for supremacy. After a long time, the spiritual intervention was finally over. In an interview two months after this episode aired, Gina describes herself as feeling much better now. The news story has never been picked up since, so who knows if Gina's change really lasted, or what has happened to her in the years since. So at first glance, this looks like it could be a real exorcism, but then again, it could be an instance of a news program taking advantage of a troubled girl and her family for ratings. There's no doubt that the priests believe Gina is possessed, and Gina herself is certainly not faking it, but there is just no way to tell if demons were really at work here, or if a group of overly religious people were being deceived uh, by their own blind faith. Number 9, The Chosen One. As this exorcism footage goes to show, Oh wow, Christian that's awful. They were stampeded? Oh my gosh. That's terrible. Demons aren't the only Hi, ones plagued say, by spiritual possessions. Doing? Here you see a supposedly possessed woman trembling under the power of group prayer, and it all begins with a single concerned looking rabbi kneeling before her. That could just be like a panic attack or something. The rabbi observes her for a bit, then he uh -oh. stands up and says something to the crowd. Under his orders, they surround the possessed woman and begin to chant as one. It all starts out quietly, but soon it grows louder and louder as the woman convulses before them, thrashing Withdraws, wildly. Yeah. You feel like you're possessed. See, I think my thing is like, how did they know she's not having a seizure? You, 
Jinx, me, we are vultures. You were thinking the same exact thing as me. Back in the day, that would have been another thing, too, that they would have thought was, um, was possession, was somebody having seizures. As the camera pans out, you can see that many rabbis have gathered here to perform this exorcism. The fact that they have so many religious leaders present indicates that whatever is inside of her must be very powerful. The religious chanting intensifies as the woman starts to cry out in pain. The rabbis continue to vigorously shake their fists at her while shouting for her demons to leave her body at once. Um, one thing that I always wonder too is like, you know how, like if you get something in your head, it can actually like make you believe something that isn't there like it's this weird thing that our brains can do like some for this is a, is a weird comparison but for instance have you ever seen someone like be at a bar and like they'll be getting what they think is like an alcoholic drink but it's not it has no alcohol in it but they drink and drink and drink a couple of it and they start actually acting drunk even though there was no alcohol in the drink at all like it's something mentally that it does to us like you mind over matter i guess something like that at this point the group exorcism appears to be working they pause often to see if the demon has completely left her when they see that it hasn't they resume the shouting once more the woman is held down and appears to still be going completely delirious this video cuts out abruptly so we don't exactly. know if the exorcism we are, was we are all virtuous. placebo the placebo effect is exactly what i was talking psychosomatic yes exactly you guys know exactly where i'm going there successful or not but by the end we can see that some members of the crowd are smiling in relief number eight sleep haunting a youtuber named dale pendleberry is getting terrible sleep and wants to know what is going wrong it isn't necessarily a lack of sleep that's the problem he thinks but rather the quality even though he makes sure to get between seven to eight hours of sleep every night he still wakes up in the morning feeling like he has gotten no sleep at all he needs to get to the bottom of this so he sets up a camcorder to record himself overnight in bed little did he know that what he was recording was his own possession his camera only films when it detects motion or audio which spares dale the trouble of fast i always you know when it comes to something like this where there's a camera on someone's bed at night you know i tend to I'm a skeptic in that in that uh, sense. It's like, mm, uh, I just, I don't know if I buy that. It's too paranormal activity-ish. Forwarding through the slow parts, when he reviews the tape, everything starts out looking ordinary, but soon after the first night, things start to get very strange. By night three, something is apparently throwing him around in his own bed. I ain't buying this. More strange noises happen throughout the next night, and at one point, he even sits up and looks straight at the camera. There is no expression on his face at all, but it looks like his eyes are completely open. Dale drops back hard onto his bed without a word. Then, on the final night, Dale does this. <laughs> Yikes. He jerked his body pretty crazy. It's hard to tell if this is real or fake for sure. Yeah, Number that was seven, weird. TJ goes insane. A YouTuber named Adam Park and his friends are pulling an all-nighter with Call of Duty when they got interrupted by some loud noises at 3 in the morning. The only other person in the house besides them is Adam's roommate, TJ, and the noises are coming from his room. Adam knows that something weird is going on, so he pulls out his phone and starts recording. Okay. What the fuck? What the fuck is that? Oh my god, what the fuck? Yo, that's Yo. Adam that opens the noise? door and peeks down the hall. This is what he hears. TJ! What the fuck? Oh, dude? hell no. Nah. Should we call the cops? Yo, call, call, the cops. Call, call the cops. Call the cops, bro. Oh my god. Alright, let's go. Let's DJ. go. Wait, you're just gonna automatically call the cops? Yo, dude, go in there. We gotta, we gotta help him, bro. TJ! We gotta help him, bro. The noise sends all four friends running back into Adam's room. One of them calls the police, and the rest decide to do what they can to help their friend. When they bravely walk back no. into the hallway, however, they find that TJ is far beyond help. T. 
Yo. Yo, get the fuck out of here, call. DJ, are you okay, dude? Oh, DJ! DJ. Oh, 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 out of all of the videos on this list, I'd have to say that this one looks the easiest to fake. Yeah. It wouldn't be that hard to have your friends all run around the house and then edit in some scary sound effects to yep. make it seem like a possession. Then again, everyone does seem pretty scared in this video. Usually yeah. at least one person is a bad actor and easy to spot in fake videos. But these guys all seem very <laughs> convincing. The, the way they keep switching from being scared to nervous seems realistic. If it is real, then I have no idea what happened after they stopped recording. Number 6, Come Here. Deanna Simpson lives in a notoriously haunted home in Hanover, Pennsylvania. Hi, she Shannon. sees shadowy figures all of the time and has Hi, even recorded guy. strange voices that seem to materialize out of thin air, like this one for example. You were to hear these ghosts telling you to come closer, don't listen. They will apparently try to possess you in a second, at least according to Deanna. But if you want to know exactly- What are those called? EVP? Do you guys believe in that? Like these EVP recordings and stuff where they like record stuff and they actually end up hearing uh, like once something about a recording, like they, you don't hear it when it actually happens, but then you rec on the recording, you play that back and then you are able to hear it. Those, I, there's been some of those that are pretty, pretty crazy that make you wonder, you know what I mean? But again, those are also something that would be very easy to fake so exactly how haunted this house really is then don't just take deanna's word for it you should ask katie kairos the fox news reporter who was sent to cover the haunted home one member of the film crew suddenly felt his wrist start to burn horribly deanna knew what had happened immediately and asked are you okay did you get scratched he was behind the camera but simpson knew what had happened right away oh my gosh he'd been scratched Simpson says it's happened to her, her husband, and friends many times before. Sure enough, there was, in fact, a fresh scratch on the inside of his arm. The cameraman later describes it as feeling like hot metal being pressed against his skin. Deanna says that this regularly happens to her and to anyone else who enters true, the home. Chelsea. She says that this is a warning shot from the ghost, but it could also be a possible possession attempt as well. She also claims to have been pushed down the stairs before. As the crew films, they see orbs coming from that area. Meanwhile, Katie gets touched and pinched by unseen figures as strange lights and noises fill the home. The reporter was definitely a believer by the time she left, along with oh, the rest wow. of her news team. Number thing. 5. Brandon vs. Zozo Cole and Ethan go to the mall and buy a Ouija board so they can, okay, in their words, put down a camera already. and see what happens. What do you guys think? Like, just, just five seconds into this clip, I'm like, this one is not real. This looks like something in a movie. They buy the board and go back to their friend Brandon's home to set things up. It soon becomes obvious that they are not taking the idea of a Ouija board seriously at all. The whole time they constantly make jokes about becoming possessed. This negative attitude could be why things go so wrong so quickly. Even when it's time to try Hi, and summon ghosts, McTag. they continue to treat the situation with blatant disrespect. Can anybody hear us? My hand is <laughs> like, look at this. this is okay, baby. if anybody can hear us, move the thing. Because, move it. Move the thing. <laughs> just be so mean. <laughs> like, I'll tell you guys. guys. Nothing happens for a while, so they take a break and come back to it later. This time, they take the Ouija board a little more seriously and try to concentrate a little harder. Before they know it, the pointer is actually moving by itself. Cole and sure. Ethan both swear that they aren't intentionally pushing it. They ask for the spirit's name and the pointer lands on the number 6 in response. But when the spirit says that this is not its real name, they repeat the question again. Instead of saying its name, the pointer moves over to a picture of the moon and then stops. This is supposed to symbolize darkness, which means that the spirit is potentially evil. At this point, Cole no longer doubts the power of the Ouija board and decides to call things off. He is too scared to continue at first, but they think about it for a while and then come to the conclusion that they have to finish what they've already started. The friends all sit down around the Ouija board and start filming again. They ask what the spirit wants. Yeah, I will say that I have never messed with a Ouija board. I've never touched one, played with one. I guess I'm superstitious enough to not do that. <laughs> And this is the response. I swear to God, I'm not into shit. I swear. Right. I'm not like a holy. Have, have you ever seen that? <laughs> no, dude. Are you kidding me? All right. Did it's you really saw that? You would not be laughing. Are you kidding? Oh my God.
The spirit spells out the word peace and highlights the word no, no peace, then it highlights the word goodbye, followed by the word no, no goodbye. In other words, it's saying that it's not leaving, no peace, no goodbyes, it's here to stay. By now everyone is too scared to continue, but by now they also don't have a choice. Brandon is acting very strange at this point. He starts to move the pointer all over the board while grinning to himself. Then he oh, starts laughing. None of his friends can even recognize him at this point. He's never looked or acted this way. Okay, that... <laughs> hey, hey. That's so oh, funny. Come on. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> According to them, Brandon became temporarily possessed that night. Instead that of lashing hilarious. out at them, they managed to get him under control, but he has been depressed and not exactly his Yes, Chelsea. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. We used to play that game now. I did do that. That one and what is it? Um Bloody Mary, where you like stand in the in the bathroom mirror when it's dark and say Bloody Mary three times and like red eyes are supposed to come out and you can see it <laughs> himself after this experience yeah, ever this since just made me as laugh. many youtubers have pointed out the friends never did properly end the ceremony so maybe that's why he was able to become possessed on the other hand this could just be a group of friends trying to play a prank online it's impossible to say for sure if it is a joke then they managed to successfully fool thousands of people number four bob Lars. well the thing um with the fingers, the light is like, is it physically like it? If you have people around, because I feel like I remembered that we did lift something doing that. And I just think that when you have that many like fingers, you actually can do it. Yeah, we are vulture said it works. You can lift a person with just two fingers if there's like six of you. See, there you go. That's exactly that is correct. Person. That's the name of an exorcist who travels around the country. Oh, yeah. To Bob Larson. We might uh, be watching some stuff from him tonight, too. <laughs> Supposedly rid people of their evil spirits. Here's just one of the many videos showing the reverend in action. I don't like you. I don't like Things you. Usual. This woman claims to have been tormented by Satan ever since her sister began praying to a demon for help after their mother passed away. She alternates between speaking in tongues and using foul language at random. The way that Bob Larson performs this exorcism is almost playful at times, but soon everything becomes much more serious. During a different up. exorcism, Bob Larson encounters a demon who prefers lady. to mock him instead of putting up any form of physical resistance. Face. He puts his hand on the possessed woman's oh, forehead and gives her a sharp command to leave. So we left the curse. We left the curse. Say it! Mm -hmm. We left the curse. We left the gates. <laughs> Fire and death. We the dead. Oh. <laughs> As the exorcism wears on, the alleged demon uh, appears to be losing its resolve. Eventually, it succumbs and leaves the woman's body. The renewed woman hugs the reverend while the crowd cheers on. Of course, these people could have been lying in order to get attention. Or maybe they have legitimate mental disorders that make them think demons are lurking inside of them. They could even be paid actors working for Bob Larson to make him seem like a real exorcist when he is not one. On the other hand, however, they could actually be possessed. Once mm. again, it's very hard to tell if these are true or not. Number three, Pope Francis. Many regard this as the most okay. clear-cut evidence for now, demonic possession of all- I have seen this one before. And I this one actually did freak me out a little bit. Not necessarily thinking that this kid is possessed or whatever, but it's just the it's just evil looking. There's just something about it that's like, uh God. All time, Pope Francis is offering his blessings at St. Peter's Square in Rome when he places hands on a man who is very troubled indeed. Nobody in the crowd knew that the Pope was moments from performing a public exorcism, not even Francis himself. The person in the wheelchair is a 47-year-old Mexican father of two, named Angel. Angel says that he has been possessed by demons as far back as 1999. So far, 10 exorcists have been unable to rid him of his, his demons, though they so have weird. all tried no less than 30 times. When Pope Francis lays hands on him, this is the end result.
like Watch that. closely and you'll see Angel's face twist and contort in pain, almost as if the demon is boiling under his skin. The longer the Pope lays his hands on him for, the more uncomfortable Angel like becomes. Really like and when the pope. pope releases him, Angel instantly slumps over and becomes tranquil. Is this an actual demonic force leaving his body? Or merely the power of suggestion at play. Whatever transpired between the two of them apparently Good wasn't enough to end all of Unhill's problems. The poor man claims he is still haunted by evil he spirits. Some stickers. say that this video serves as evidence that demons and religion are not real, and that Unhill is crazy instead of possessed. Others, however, insist that this is proof of just how powerful and dangerous the spirit world can be. If this is a real possession, then one thing is for sure, Angel is most likely stuck with his demons for good. After all, if the Pope himself can't get rid of them for you, is there anyone left who can? It Number could have been like a reaction where the guy was just like taken aback. Do you know what I mean? Like how people act when they've when people have met like Michael Jackson and shit. Like you know how they like lose their minds and shit. Like maybe it's just that because he the Pope is like a celebrity, you know. Number 2. Rule Possession This footage is supposedly from the 70s and is said to have been removed from someone's attic in Iowa. You're this about to creepy. see some shocking clips yeah, from- Yeah, this is creepy, but I don't think it's real, but it is creepy as hell. ...from this film, but the full version is so violent and disturbing that I can't show everything. Anyway, the video begins with someone walking up to a possessed person lying in bed. This person is very gaunt and still, breathing heavily, staring straight ahead. Suddenly, a nearby door opens all by itself. We can't show you this next part, but the person appears to be ripping their fingernails off one by one while they are still hunched over. I don't mean just a hangnail either, I mean the That's entire awful. nail. The man looks up at the camera and the scene abruptly ends. Apparently being in pain must make this thing very happy because in the next scene it's sitting upright in bed, smiling and laughing demonically. <laughs> the bedridden figure suddenly slashes around wildly while screaming and then you won't believe what it does next. It slices away at its lips and neck with a razor blade until it is completely bloodied and disfigured. The scene makes up a large part of the video, but unfortunately I cannot show it here. At one point, the possessed man cuts off his lips and is staring straight at the camera, his teeth jagged and bloody. The final scene is him slicing away at its throat, and it looks Yikes. like there is no way he could have made it. I really hope that this is all makeup and special effects. If so, it's very convincing and well done. Before we get to number one, if you've ever been curious as to what I look like in real life, then follow me on Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT with underscores instead of spaces. I also have a Twitter at YT underscore chills where I post video updates. I'd really appreciate it if you followed me and feel free to send me a DM if you have any questions or suggestions. If you'd like to see more of these videos in the future, then hit that subscribe button because I upload a new scary video every Thursday. Number one, the laughing victim. Chelsea, I have been to Graceland a couple of years ago. We went to Graceland and it was very interesting. Very interesting. This one, okay, this one I'm going to say right now. This one scares me the most. I think that it deserves to be at number one. This, I've seen this one before and this freaked me out. This man was shot in the face somewhere in Brazil. A hospital worker started filming this after the gunshot victim suddenly jumped up and started laughing hysterically. Possessed or not, I've never seen someone get shot and act like this before, have you? He eventually like, stops laughing for a second happening? and then starts screaming in a deep voice while walking backwards. Creepy. His muscles are extremely tense and again, I've never seen anyone move like this before in my entire life. Você não é poderoso. Você não é poderoso. Jesus, Deus está aqui. Gotta be high. Gotta be. Você não é poderoso. Despite being shot in the face and losing a massive amount of blood, this man appears ready to fight anyone who gets in his way. All attempts to reason with him are met only with growls and aggressive posturing. It looks like they are holding something in front of him to keep him from attacking. 
possibly a walker or some other piece of medical equipment. The doctor appears to be asking for an explanation for his behavior, and his eyes grow wide with fury as he explains to them what is wrong. If they're at a hospital, tell me this, couldn't they just put him under? Like, couldn't they give him something and knock him the fuck out? Lucifer, he says. In that moment, he claims to be possessed by the Prince of Darkness. If anyone can translate the rest of what he says in this video, please let me know. I'd really like to understand what he's saying. If this wasn't a possession, then this man was probably high on drugs and adrenaline. Still, I've never seen someone lean that far back without falling over, especially after getting shot in the head. If he was intoxicated and injured, then he probably shouldn't be able to do that. This is another one that looks like it might actually be a legitimate possession, but again, I turn to you for an answer. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe. Okay, there's one. Let's see what other stuff do I have on here for you guys. Okay, let's see. Oh, here's one I wanted to do. This is, I think, so interesting. It might be boring to you guys, but I think it's really interesting. Um, here we go. And let me drop the link to it. There's the link. And to avoid falling prey to ghouls, vandals, and treasure hunters. We're in Switzerland, where movie legend Charlie Chaplin is laid to rest. He's one of the great icons of cinema, remembered for his silent films and the Little Tramp character. He spent his final years here in Switzerland, passing away in 1977 at age 88. He was laid to rest here. But the following year, in 1978, Two grave robbers dug up his body and held it for ransom, reburying it in a cornfield in the nearby village of Nova. Um, Chelsea, you said, asked if when I was at Graceland, did I feel Elvis's presence? No, I didn't. It's very commercialized. I mean, it was um, interesting to see everything, but you know, it's there's just a, there were like a lot of people there at the same time, and you're walking through, and it's just yeah. It's it's uh, it's interesting to see it all. I really wanted to go upstairs where he actually where he died and like get to see that, but they don't allow that. Like you can't go upstairs at all. That part is blocked off. So, you know, it's also not as big as you would think. Like you would think that, you know, it's Elvis, like he lived in a mansion or something, right? But really it's not a mansion. It's it's a just it's like a fairly large home. But it's something that you'd see, uh, nor it's not, it's just not what you would think. You, you would think that he lived in something real extravagant, and nope, it's very normal. The body snatchers demanded money from his widow, Una, for the return of his body. The two were soon arrested, and Charlie Chaplin's body was found and returned to this site, this time placed in a reinforced concrete vault. This is Eden Cemetery in the San Fernando Valley. Here we find the niche of another comedy legend, Groucho Marx. He was one of the famous Marx brothers, Groucho being particularly renowned for his quick wit. He died, curiously, the same year as Charlie Chaplin, 1977, and his remains would experience a similar fate. Groucho was cremated, his ashes inurned here at Eden, in 1982, the urn containing Groucho's ashes was stolen from here. But what makes this story even more unusual is the fact that his ashes were left the next day without explanation or demand at the gates of another cemetery, Mount Sinai, some 15 miles away. His ashes were eventually returned here and inurned in this room, now outfitted with security cameras. Charlie, girl, you want to be famous enough for people to steal your body? 
Our next unusual tale of disturbed slumber takes us to London and the Golders Green Columbarium. This is the urn of Sigmund Freud, known as the father of modern psychoanalysis. He died in 1939 at age 83 and was cremated. You'll notice his urn is now protected behind glass. That's because in 2014 thieves broke in and attempted, unsuccessfully, to steal his ashes, but broke his urn in the process. I'll let the caretaker here at Golders tell the story. 2014 he broke it, New Year's Eve. Away for a year while it's been repaired. That's the urn he packed. That urn was in about 70 pieces. Gosh. And his ashes were all over the floor, so I had to very carefully scrape up his ashes. Oh, did you? Oh, gosh. Scoop them up with a little brush and a scoop. Wow. And then put them into a... Are they inside the thing on the top? Yeah, or are they, they're yes. In a, they're, they're in a plastic bag now. Yes. Nowadays we bag all the ashes yes. when we do it. In those days they just put the ashes straight loosely into the container. Of course. So if, it, if, you, if somebody ever dropped a grandma on the floor at home, then she's like, then you got to move the hoover to pick her up. <laughs> Luckily here it's on a marble floor, so I could very easily sweep up all these remains from everywhere. They just ran everywhere. From London, England to Milan, Italy. If you've seen the musical Evita, you know the story of Eva Peron. First Lady of Argentina, wife of President Juan Perón, hero of the working class and women in Argentina. But the story of Eva's body after she died from cancer in 1952 is just as intriguing as her real life. Shortly after her death, Eva's body was embalmed and perfectly preserved. Her body was on display to the public for years while a memorial was being built. So wait, explain to me this. Her body they were able to like it, it was preserved and people were able to come and visit it for years for years like i know that um you know embalming and stuff does but does it like does it do that much where you could literally man that just seems crazy to me but before the memorial could be completed juan peron was overthrown by a military coup and was forced to flee the country before he was able to secure the body of his beloved Evita. The new dictatorship of Argentina wanted Eva's body out of the way, removing her in the dead of night. The whereabouts of her body after that remained a mystery for 16 years. Graffiti even began to appear in Argentina asking, where is the body of Eva Perón? In 1971, it was discovered that Evita had been buried here in Milan under the name Maria Maggi. Oh, rem- Tangle Bliss, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry for your loss. That's so sad. I'm, that breaks my heart. Mains were exhumed and returned to Juan, who then lived in Spain. Juan kept and maintained her corpse right there in his home for years. Juan Perón eventually returned to Argentina as president, and Eva's body soon followed. Juan suddenly died shortly thereafter, and once again Evita's preserved and recently restored body was placed on display next to her husband. But civil unrest would once again derail plans for a grand monument. Eva Perón was finally laid to rest in a fortified tomb at Recoleta Cemetery in Buenos Aires, Argentina, some 24 years after her death. Sometimes those who disturb the slumber of the deceased aren't strangers or obsessed fans, but friends and loved ones. We're in Joshua Tree at the Joshua Tree Inn. This is Room 8, where popular singer-songwriter Graham Parsons would spend his last night. It is now appropriately known as the Graham Parsons Room. In 1973, Graham died from a drug overdose at the age of 26. Before his death, Graham had expressed a desire to be cremated and his ashes scattered in Joshua Tree. However, after his sudden death, his stepfather organized a funeral for him back in Louisiana. In an attempt to fulfill Graham's final wishes, two of his friends borrowed a hearse and stole his body from the Los Angeles International Airport. They then drove it back to Joshua Tree, to an area known as Cap Rock. There they would attempt to cremate Graham Parsons' body, dousing the coffin in gasoline and setting it ablaze. Oh, this is the site out. of the attempted cremation of Graham Parsons. His body only partially burned though, and what was left of him was eventually flown to Louisiana for burial. As for the two friends, since there was no law against stealing a body, they were fined for stealing the casket he was in. What? 
there's no, there's crime for stealing a body now. Isn't for there? a time, there was a memorial here at Cap Rock to Graham Parsons, but that has since been moved to just outside Room Eight, at the Joshua Tree Inn, which is now said to be haunted by the ghost of Graham Parsons. Ooh, haunted. <laughs> Graham Parsons wasn't the only entertainer whose friends took their deceased body for one last ride. This is Calvary Mausoleum in Los Angeles. Chelsea, Here we you find go. the crypt of. You definitely gotta go if that's your dream. There's a lot of cool stuff. Um, even outside of the house itself, there's like uh, across the the way near it. It's there's a whole museum with all different kinds of his stuff and memorabilia, and you can even do a tour on his private jet, um, or plane or whatever. I don't know. If it's a jet, private plane. The Lisa Marie, I believe is the name of it. It's named after Lisa Marie. So, And then, of course, he's buried right there in the backyard. His his um, gravestone and all that, he's right there in the backyard. So you get to visit his grave if you go there as well. The great profile, John Barrymore, one of early Hollywood's legendary actors, a giant of silent and early talky films. He was the grandfather of actress Drew Barrymore, John died in 1942 at age 60. Distraught by his death, close friends Errol Flynn and Raoul Walsh sought to drown their sorrows in booze. While the details of what happened late that night are varied and sketchy, the essence was this. Walsh left the bar before Flynn, and with a few other cohorts... All my mirrors. No, I didn't. But can, I want, can I watch that um, after this? Like I can just the trailer for it? I'm interested in that. I forgot Went to the it. mortuary and borrowed John's corpse for one last fling. They took the body to Errol Flynn's house and propped it up in a chair. When Flynn returned home and saw his dearly departed friend sitting there in the chair, he ran from the house screaming. <laughs> That's one hell of a story, recently confirmed by Drew Barrymore herself. But this wasn't the end for John. He wished to be cremated and laid to rest next to his parents in Philadelphia. But as a Catholic, he could not be cremated, so he was entombed here. Nearly four decades later, John Barrymore's son and grandson exhumed his corpse from here and transported it to a crematory. His cremated remains were then reinterred next to his parents in Philadelphia, so this crypt is now empty. Where most folks have one final resting place, others have two or more. Here in Chapter 2, we explore the unusual cases of notable figures who rest in pieces. We don't mean those with multiple monuments or cenotaphs, but those whose physical remains are actually divided amongst multiple locations. Take Dinah Shore, Bear, for example. She's awesome. She was one of the most popular female vocalists of the big band era and would go on to be a major television star. Awesome. Thank you. Dinah died in 1994 and now has two graves. One in Los Angeles, the other in Palm Springs. She was cremated, with half her ashes placed in a crypt at Hillside Memorial Park, the other half placed in a niche at Forest Lawn Cathedral City. In our tour of Paris, we found several French notables entombed in the Pantheon. Among them is Louis Braille, the namesake and inventor of Braille which is a system of raised dots used by the seeing impaired to read. Being blind himself, Louis invented the system in the early 1800s. After his death in 1852, he was laid to rest in his hometown of Couvray. But on the 100th anniversary of his death, his remains were moved here to the Pantheon. However, in a symbolic gesture, his hands were removed and left buried in his what? hometown. Whoa, that's weird. Hi, Isabella, how are you doing? Our most recent tour brought us through Italy. If you saw that tour, you'll remember our visit to the tomb of Galileo at Santa Croce in Florence. Galileo was a famed Renaissance scientist who made pioneering observations and discoveries in astronomy and physics. After his death, Galileo was denied a burial of prominence, having been deemed a heretic for his teaching that the Earth went around the Sun. Nearly a century later, he was moved to this grand tomb. In moving Galileo's body here, Three fingers and a tooth were removed, Ew. which are now on display in the Museum of History Why? and Science in Florence. 
The removal of body parts to be put on display for veneration as relics was a common practice at the time for saints, but quite unheard of for a man deemed a heretic by the church. Which of Galileo's fingers is on display? The middle one. Of course. Interpret that as you- Of course it's the middle one. Oh god. Hi Miracle. Will. Also here in Italy, in Rome to be precise, we found Percy Bysshe Shelley. He was one of the great romantic poets with Lord Byron and John Keats. Percy Shelley died in a shipwreck off the coast of Italy at the age of 29. His body washed up on shore days later. There on the sands of Via Reggio, a small funeral was held and his body was cremated. But parts of him didn't burn completely, including, famously, his heart the remains of which were given to his wife Mary, who kept it for the remainder of her life. Wow. Mary Shelley, you'll recall, wrote Frankenstein. That piece of Percy Shelley's heart that went to Mary would eventually be interred in the family vault in England, where Mary and their son Percy are laid to rest. Our next stop is Westminster Abbey in London, England. This is the grave of novelist and poet Thomas Hardy. He's best remembered for stories like Tess of the D'Urbervilles, he died in 1928 at age 87. After his death, his ashes were entombed here, though not all of Thomas Hardy is here. Hardy had expressed a desire to be buried in Stinsford with his first wife, Emma, but his estate executor wanted him at Westminster Abbey. As a compromise, before cremation, his heart was removed Jeez. and buried here alongside his beloved. Taking people's hearts out. Burial of the heart separate from the rest of the body was not as uncommon as you might think. At Père Lachaise, back in Paris, we find the grave of Frédéric Chopin, one of the great composers and pianists of the Romantic era. He wrote this song that you all know. After his death in 1849, at the age of 39, he was buried here in Paris. But being Polish, Chopin left his heart in Poland, literally. Before burial, his heart was removed and entombed at Holy Cross Church in Warsaw. Um, Charlie Girl, I don't think that it's weird to have ashes spread in two different places. Not at all. If you've ever wandered a cemetery, surely you've come across a monument or epitaph that stood out amongst the rest. Within these unique monuments is imbued the very personality of the deceased, a life summed up in a sculpture or witty phrase. Some can make you laugh. That's all, folks. Others can be thought-provoking or leave you with more questions than answers. In Chapter 3 of our Treatise of the Unusual, we explore some of the most unique monuments, grave markers, and epitaphs we've come across. Aww. Such a little dog. Tigger! Are you kidding me? Factory rejects? Most people have two dates on their markers. Actor Richard Conti, of Godfather fame, has a third open-ended date. Planning a comeback, perhaps. <laughs> the most sought-after grave in Westwood is the crypt of Marilyn Monroe. Sometimes people have trouble finding it, and Stevie Don Cochran here was well aware of that fact. So, he was kind enough to put directions on his own crypt to Marilyn's, which is just wow. around the corner. There she is. Marilyn. Marilyn Monroe. This is one of my favorites, which you'll recall is an allusion to the final line of Billy Wilder's Some Like It Hot. But you don't understand, I'm good. Uh, I'm a man. Well, nobody's perfect. Uh. 
We're in Salt Lake City, Utah now. Zion, home of the Mormons. The last place on Earth you'd expect to find the most devilish epitaph on Earth. Here lies Lily Gray, victim of the Beast 666. Well, damn. And beyond just the obvious epitaph, the flowers engraved here are known as Devil's Lantern. Even the dates of her birth, June 6th, 6, 6, and 1881, 1 plus 8 plus 8 plus 1 is 18, which is 6 plus 6 plus 6. Wow. No one knows what Lily's husband meant by this epitaph on his wife's stone. Was she a victim of some satanic ritual? Not likely. Most people chalk it up to mental illness on the part of her husband. But that hasn't stopped stories from spreading about strange experiences people have had after visiting the grave of Lily Gray. This is New Boston Cemetery in New Hampshire, where we find the grave of one Sevilla Jones. A casual stroll by this grave might not grab your attention unless you read the epitaph. Sevilla, murdered by Henry and Sargent, age 17 years. Thus fell this lovely blooming daughter. By the revengeful hand, a malicious Henry. When on her way to school he met her, and with a six self-cocked pistol shot her. Oh, God. This chilling inscription is perhaps one of the only examples where the victim's murderer is called out by name on the victim's very own tombstone. And adding to this unusual tale, just a stone's throw away in this same cemetery, is the grave of her murderer, Henry, whose last name was left off the tombstone for the disgrace of what he had done before turning the gun on himself. If you visited Rudolph Valentino, you may have noticed this crypt high on the opposite wall. It contains a strong indictment of our healthcare system. Uh. Named after actor Marlon Brando, looked a lot like actor Sean Penn. My son had no medical insurance. That's why he's here today. Well, that's sad. Barbara Sue Menire had a wonderful sense of humor. On her grave here in Highland Cemetery uh. in Oklahoma, is a parking meter, which reads, Time Expired. <laughs> That's cute. Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris is full of unique monuments. One of the most unique here belongs to Fernand Arbelot. A likeness of Fernand lies in repose here on his grave, holding what looks like a decapitated head. But the truth of this monument is far less gory. Quite sweet, actually. Fernand died in 1942 during Nazi occupation. It was his dying wish that he be able to forever gaze upon the beautiful face of his beloved wife. Aww. And so this monument was sculpted, in which That's Fernand sweet. gazes into the face of his wife for all eternity. His epitaph reads, They marveled at the beauty of the journey that brought them to the end of life. Some graves we've visited aren't even graves at all. If you've wandered the southern end of Hollywood Forest Lawn in the Hollywood Hills. Are there any um, Six Feet Under fans here? The show? I love that show. I just, in fact, I haven't seen it in a while. I might rewatch it soon because I just, there's something about that show that I just love so much. Magicians Penn and Teller purchased this plot and placed the marker featuring the Three of Clubs as the payoff of an elaborate magic trick. They help you set up this magic trick in their show, Penn and Teller Bullshit, in the episode titled Death, Inc. We thought it'd be nice we die for y'all to get some fun out of it, so we bought a grave plot at the Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills, and we set up a grave marker. We did all the hard work, and here's how you use it. Take a friend, a pen, an envelope, any pack of cards, and a camera to Hollywood. You know what we're going to do real quick? You loved Six Feet Under? Yes! Hogtie Champ, you know what I'm talking about then. Lovely Leech, you loved it too? Let's do a little palette cleanser, kind of, and watch this trailer. Let's see. 
me pull it up real quick. Because I have not seen this trailer yet, and apparently I need to. It's going to be good. So let's watch it really quick, and then we'll go back to that video. Yeah, Six Feet Under, it's on HBO. Interesting. Silent Hill F. Wow. Okay. That was definitely interesting. Now we'll go back to... When you think of a grave, you invariably think of a cemetery, graveyard, or a mausoleum. Where else would one find a grave, after all? Well, you'd be surprised. You never know where you might stumble upon an unexpected grave or final resting place. Here in Chapter 4, we hop the fence out of our local graveyard to discover graves off the beaten path. This looks like your average, ordinary desert graveyard, right? Wrong. This is a car graveyard. Oh. Actually, it's an art installation known as the International Car Forest in Nevada. If you wander amongst these cars that are sprouting from the ground like tombstones, you'll find an actual tombstone. Jesse S. Leinbarger, 1916 to 1989. It's unlikely this is an actual grave. There's a grave to a Jesse Leinbarger with these same dates in Tonopah Cemetery a few miles up the road. But he spells his name J-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, not J-E-S-S-I-E, -S -S -E, as it is here. So this likely is a discarded tombstone with a spelling error. That's huh. one expensive typo. Wow. In 2019, we took a trip to Interlake in New York to find the grave of Rod Serling for our Twilight Zone special. Oh, cool. While there, we stayed in a charming old bed and breakfast. When we mentioned we were visiting the cemetery, the owner told us there was a grave in the basement of his bed and breakfast, and he asked if we would like to see it. Of course, we said yes, among the first of his guests brave enough, or foolish enough, to follow him into his dark basement to find a grave. Sure enough, there in the basement of his quaint little bed and breakfast was the tombstone of one Hester Ann Avery, died at age 25 in 1848. The owner had no idea where the actual grave of Hester is, or how her tombstone ended up in the basement. Hmm. 
Every grave we've ever visited has been on planet Earth. But not every human's remains remain on planet Earth. Dr. Eugene Shoemaker was one of the founders of planetary science, and is the co-namesake of Comet Shoemaker-Levy. After he died in a car accident in 1997, a portion of his ashes was carried to the moon aboard NASA's Lunar Prospector spacecraft. So now every time you look up at the full moon, you're looking at Dr. Shoemaker's grave, the man on the moon. Other notable figures have had portions of their cremated remains launched into space, including Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, James Doohan, who played Scotty on Star Trek, and soon Gene's wife, Majel Barrett, who also appeared in Star Trek, will have portions of her ashes, along with more of her husband's, launched into space. Some of these orbited the Earth for a time before burning up on re-entry, others were brought back to Earth upon return. From the final frontier wow, to the deep blue sea, a voyage across the sea has long been a metaphor wow, for death, but for some, the love of the sea transcends death. As long as men have traveled the sea, there have been burials at sea. But the Neptune Memorial Reef off the coast of Florida has taken burial at sea to a new level. Wow, that's so cool. That level being about 40 feet below the surface of the Atlantic Ocean. This is the world's largest man-made reef, and quite literally, an underwater cemetery. A columbarium, to be precise, which can hold the cremated remains of those who literally wish to spend eternity swimming with the fishes. <laughs> Cremated remains are mixed with cement and poured into molds to form features of the columbarium, like starfish or seashells, which feature the name of the individual on a plaque. This is the only cemetery in the world you need to be a certified diver to visit. Among those who chose the Neptune Reef as their final resting place is famed TV chef Julia Child. Oh wow. From under the sea to the happiest place on earth. Uh -oh. Now what could we possibly be doing at Disney Disneyland World. in our exploration of unusual Disneyland. final resting places? Those familiar Disney with World Disneyland fans. urban legends might guess that we'll be getting in line for Pirates of the Caribbean. When the ride was originally created in the 60s, some of the original skeletons were real, donated from UCLA. Wow, Over the years that. though, these real skeletons have been removed and buried replaced with artificial bones, except one. At least, according to the remnants of this urban legend, there remains one genuine human skull on the ride. This one, which sits on the headboard of the bed in the captain's quarters. Wow, that's creepy. If true, some random lucky dude from a bygone era gets to call Pirates of the Caribbean his eternal home. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't jealous. <laughs> if I had my way, after I die, my skull would be placed on display somewhere in Pirates or in the Haunted Mansion. But of course, such is impossible. I'm not the only one, though, who has mused about spending eternity in the happiest place on Earth. From time to time, Disney has had to contend with people bringing ashes of loved ones who wished to spend forever in the parks, scattering those ashes on rides like Pirates or the Haunted Mansion, or in flower beds, or pretty much anywhere that had special that meaning cool to ride. the individual. The Haunted Mansion. For our next stop, we hop a plane to the Savannah International Airport in Georgia. Then from here we head, well, nowhere actually. This is right where we want to be. Notice anything unusual on the runway? No? Let's zoom in a little closer. How about now? See those two blocks on the runway that look oddly like graves? Those are graves. What? The airport and runways were built on farmland that once belonged to the Dotson family. Wow. One of the runways in particular went right over the burial ground. Most of the 100 graves were moved, but the family did not want the graves of Richard and Catherine Dotson moved, I can. believing How they wouldn't doing? want to abandon the land they had cultivated. So the graves were left in place, and the runway paved right around them. So next time you fly into Savannah, Keep an eye on the runway. You might just be landing on the graves of Richard and Catherine Dotson. Chapter 5. This one's dedicated to the just plain bizarre. Like me wearing my sunglasses indoors at night 
Bazaar. One of the most visited graves in the world is the crypt of Marilyn Monroe, here at Westwood Village Memorial Park. Perhaps you know the story of the man entombed just above Marilyn. Richard Poncher happened to meet Joe DiMaggio as Joe and Marilyn were divorcing. Joe was looking to offload crypts he had purchased in Westwood. Richard and his wife bought two of them. After Marilyn died years later, Richard realized that his crypt would be directly above Marilyn. Not wanting to have his back turned to the legendary starlet for all eternity, he made an unusual final request. If I croak, he said to his wife, if you don't put me upside down over Marilyn, I'll haunt you for the rest of my life. And so it was. After Richard's funeral, his wife and the funeral director turned Richard over in his casket before entombment so he could face Marilyn forever. What do you plan on being buried in after you die? A coffin? A casket? Perhaps you're going green and will be buried in natural linens. Well, Sandra West had another idea. This is Alamo Masonic Cemetery in San Antonio, Texas. And this oversized grave here belongs to Sandra, who died in 1977 at age 38. At her request, before burial, she was placed not in a coffin, but in the front seat of her favorite car, a blue 1964 Ferrari, and was buried in it. Oh, wow. It was so large it required her grave to occupy several adjacent plots. Huh. There are countless stars whose final resting places we'll never be able to visit since they were cremated, their ashes either scattered or privately held. One such individual is Al Lewis, best known as Grandpa Munster in The Munsters. Come on, everybody, hop in. I'll take us all for a ride through the cemetery. <laughs> he loved a good cigar. Five star. And after Thanks his death, he was cremated out. and had his ashes placed in his favorite cigar box. In a curious moment of foreshadowing, Al hinted his final destination on an episode of The Munsters, some 40 years before his death. Ooh. Ooh. It's a box of cigars. And the box, you see, is a great place to keep your ashes. <laughs> Have you ever seen the 2014 film Burying the X? If so, you'll certainly recognize where these scenes were shot. Hollywood Forever Cemetery. The movie starred Anton Yelchin. Hey. Tragically, Anton would die two years later at just 27 in a freak car accident. Anton was laid to rest here at Hollywood Forever, his grave overlooking the lake marked by an amazing statue. But back to burying the X. What makes this shot here so haunting, so unusual, is that it is likely the only scene in movie history in which an actor is filmed in the same shot as his own future grave. Off in the distance here in this shot, you can see where Anton would be laid to rest just wow. two years later. Wow. It's a nice night for a zombie movie surrounded by a bunch of dead people. I wouldn't have it any other way. Wow. Here's another tale from Hollywood Forever. This one concerns Cyril and Addie Thorne. The two were married, but Addie died in 1946 at the age of 38 and was laid to rest here. Afterwards, Cyril's fascination with death grew. He became eager to experience death and the afterlife. After a number of failed suicide attempts, in 1953 Cyril came here to Hollywood Forever, placed flowers on the grave of his first wife Addie then sat on the grass under a nearby cypress tree. He then strapped on a breathing mask connected to a carbon monoxide canister. Jeez. Within minutes he was dead, wow. right here on the grounds of the cemetery. He had left a note with instructions for his funeral, which contained his plans to demonstrate existence after death. He requested that some light, tall object be placed on top of the coffin in full view of everyone. He went on to say, I will try to knock it off if I can. If I don't succeed, it will prove nothing to those of you who do not understand. If I do, it will prove much. The experiment was carried out at his funeral. The funeral attendees watched in anticipation, waiting for Cyril's spirit to knock the cylinder off his own coffin. It never moved. 
Harold Carrington, a noted investigator of psychic phenomena and director of the funeral, told the crowd, After the transition there must be a period of confusion, of disorientation to the new surroundings, which perhaps adversely affects attempts to perform such an experiment. As he sat next to Thorne's coffin, Carrington urged him to try again. Sigh, we will now ask you to try to influence the objects, as you said you would. Try, Sigh. Again, the objects didn't move. Cyril was later laid to rest, here next to Addie, just feet from where he died. Alright, we're gonna do a little palate cleanser, guys. Just a quick little palate cleanser, then we'll come back and finish the rest of this up. So, wait, wrong one. There we go. This is jealous dogs. <laughs> oh, look how sweet. No. Pet Luli? Pet Lou? Pet Lou? Pet you? Pet you? Oh god. Oh. <laughs> He's gonna rip that. I wonder if that's the mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so cute. Oh my god. How cute is that? Oh, <laughs> oh my God, that might be the cutest thing I've ever seen. What is it doing? <laughs> He's not having it. <laughs> oh my god! How did they do that? That's a strong dude. That's so cute. I, I can't. Like, I love that bird. Thank you, baby. Oh, poor thing. Man, 
Now he's just trying to rub his hair. <laughs> Chrisley. <laughs> Chrisley. You tell a girl. I'm just trying to rub his <laughs> Like, hold me too. I'm still here. Oh. Oh. Poor thing. Oh my god. Wow. Oh, sweet doggy. Excuse you. Shepherd mix. He's a little mutt. Oh, nice puppy. <laughs> He's a nice puppy. Oh, nice puppy.
This next bizarre tale guys. takes us to the other side of the world. There are a number of sites that claim to be the tomb of the biblical prophet Daniel. This one is found in Uzbekistan. The first thing you'll notice about this sarcophagus is just how long it is. Wow. 18 meters to be precise, nearly 60 feet. Was the prophet Daniel 60 feet tall? No. But according to one legend, the reason the prophet's tomb is so long is because Daniel's body buried next to a natural spring with healing powers, has continued to grow year after year, even after his death. We're back in California to revisit a tragic tale that will be familiar to you Disney fans. Bobby Driscoll was Disney's first child star. He was the voice and model of Peter Pan in Peter Pan, and starred in a number of Disney's early live action films, like Song of the South and Treasure Island. His performances in So Dear to My Heart and The Window earned him a Juvenile Academy Award in 1949. As he grew through adolescence in the 50s, his career began to decline. His life and career became plagued by drug abuse, run-ins with the law, and bullying from other kids about his film career. The downfall of Bobby Driscoll is a tragically example of a fallen child star. After spending time in a narcotics rehabilitation center, he moved to New York in hopes of reviving his career on the Broadway stage, but was unsuccessful. Penniless, Driscoll disappeared into Manhattan's underground in the late 60s. In March of 68, in a scene eerily similar to the plot of The Window in which he starred, two boys, playing in a deserted East Village tenement, discovered the body of Bobby Driscoll. He had died from heart failure due to drug use at just 31. There was no identification on his body. Photos were circulated to try to identify him, but he went unidentified and unclaimed. And so, Bobby Driscoll, once the biggest child star in the world, was buried in a pauper's grave in Hart Island's Potter's Field. The following year, his mother sought help from officials in locating her son. This would lead to fingerprint identification that it was Bobby discovered in that abandoned tenement and buried in the Potter's Field. So even though his name is here on his father's marker, his remains still lie somewhere on Hart Island. Our next two bizarre tales come to us courtesy of fellow YouTuber, friend of Hollywood Graveyard, and man whose beard rivals that of my own, ready for history. This is Summit View Cemetery in Oklahoma, where we find the grave of Elmer McCurdy. He was a notorious outlaw of the late 19th, early 20th centuries, but his post-mortem exploits would far surpass anything he did in life. In 1911, Elmer was killed in a shootout with police after robbing a train. His body was embalmed, but went unclaimed, so in order to recuperate costs of embalming, the funeral home dressed up McCurdy's body and put him on display, wow. charging people a nickel to see the bandit who wouldn't give up, as he was branded. A short time later, two men claiming to be McCurdy's brother claimed the body. But they were not his brothers, uh -oh. but rather two owners of the traveling carnival who wanted to exhibit Elmer's corpse as wow. the outlaw who would never be captured alive. Elmer would later join the traveling museum of crime, which featured wax replicas of other notorious criminals. By the 30s, Elmer McCurdy's body had become completely mummified. Oh he eventually scary. wound up in storage in Los Angeles even making a brief appearance in the 1967 film She Freak as a prop. Freak. In the 1970s, Elmer's corpse was hung in the Laugh in the Dark Funhouse in Long Beach. By this time, no one was aware that Elmer's body was a real body. 
people just assuming it was a mannequin. In 1976, the production team of the television show The Six Million Dollar Man was filming a carnival scene. A prop man moved what he thought was a mannequin hanging from the gallows. In doing so, the arm broke off, and it quickly became clear that this was not a mannequin. The police were called, and through extensive forensic investigation, it was determined that this was the body of Elmer McCurdy, who went on a 65-year cross-country adventure, appearing in movies and spooking people in funhouses, after his death. Do you believe in aliens? The people of Aurora, Texas do. This is Aurora Cemetery. Let's read what this historical marker says. This site is also well known because of the legend that a spaceship crashed nearby in 1897, and the pilot, killed in the crash, was buried here. That's right folks, there is a grave here in Aurora that purportedly contains the remains of an extraterrestrial. What? An alien grave. As the story goes, a UFO crashed on a farm here in Aurora after striking a windmill. The pilot who died in the crash was described as not of this world, what? and a Martian. No. The wreckage was dumped into a nearby well, and the alien pilot was buried near this spot in the cemetery, marked only by a rock and offerings from visitors. UFO enthusiasts wow. have petitioned to exhume the body, but according to Texas law, to do so requires permission from next of kin. So unless anyone what? can phone home and reach E.T.'s next of kin, oh this grave God. will remain undisturbed. Do you believe an alien rests here under? Or is this just another UFO hoax? Someone call Fox Mulder. <laughs> For more stories like these, be sure to check out Reddy's YouTube channel. The final stop on our journey through the strange and unusual brings us back to Paris. It's not uncommon to see nude, non-sexual monuments in cemeteries around the world. But this next one, quite the opposite, is non-nude, but notoriously sexual. As oh. such, we'll slap a PG-13 advisory on this one. Uh -oh. This is the legendary tomb of Victor Noir. At face value, just the effigy of a man lying in repose, until you see certain areas of the statue a bit more polished than the rest. What? The act of rubbing parts of a statue for good luck is as old as statue making itself. In the case of Victor here, it's hard to miss the distinctive bulge in his trousers. Oh, Jesus. Trousers which have one button undone. Victor Noir's monument has become one of the most popular wow. here at Père Lachaise for women to visit because, as the wow. legend goes, placing a flower in his hat, then kissing the statue on the lips, and rubbing his manhood, will lead to enhanced fertility and a blissful sex life. What? More specifically, if you want to find a beautiful lover, you should kiss Noir's lips. And if you want to get pregnant, you should also touch his right foot. And if you want to have twins, you should touch his left foot. What? Believe it or not, as Ripley would say. This has led to Victor's tomb being known as the sexiest grave in Paris. Uh, uh. And finally, how much money would it take for you to spend a year and a day inside a tomb with a dead Russian countess? Would a million dollars be enough? That's a yes from me. Where do I sign up? This grand monument is the final resting place of Elizabeth Alexandrovna Didemidov, a Russian baroness who died in 1818 at just 39. According to legend, after her death, a provision was discovered in her will that offered one million dollars to anyone who would spend a year and a day alone inside her tomb with her. The provision goes on to state that Elizabeth would be laid to rest in a clear glass coffin, and the walls of the tomb would be covered in mirrors, so that wherever the visitor looked, they would be unable to escape the gaze of the dead. The visitor would be brought food, and only allowed to leave the tomb after hours when the cemetery was closed so as not to commune with any other living soul. It's reported that a number of men tried, but failed the challenge, one even being driven mad. This has led to Elizabeth being known as the Vampire Baroness, or Vampire Princess of Paris. Whether true or some fanciful fabrication, it makes you wonder, would you be brave enough? As you ponder that point, and we close the book on today's exploration of the unusual. 
Let me leave you with another question. Did the large glass door of the Freedom Mausoleum just open and close entirely on its own? Yes. Yes, it did. Perhaps Clara Bow coming out to say hello. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hmm. All right. Well, guys, that is going to be it for tonight. I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I plan on doing some more spooky stuff tomorrow. Um, and then, of course, if anything happens with the Shani and Rev or G-Man or that crew, um, I will cover it and bring it to you right away like I do. Um, so thank you guys for coming and hanging out tonight. We got to see uh, G-Man try to um, prove his side a little bit that he's not helping Rev and Shani. Mm. Still don't know what to think there. What did you guys think about the coughing? Was that Rev? Was that somebody outside? Was it a ghost? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for tonight. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I really appreciate all your support and kindness. I love hanging out with you guys. Y'all are awesome, every single one of you. Um, I'm going to leave you with something from the channel please notice me i'm going to go ahead and drop the link in the chat for them right now because you've got to check them out they are so talented and awesome and um i will be seeing you guys next time i hope you guys have a great night love you lots bye guys Sitting in my house and I grew up in With a big old horse with some big old hooves That won't get the fuck out of my bed She's me, here is blue She just wants to fuck with you She wants your money and she wants your cash And she don't want her kids cause she gave them away She made me cut my hair And shave off my eyebrows And that is what I get for living with a rose cow I'm the Reverend Jesus individual. I ain't here to see who we want. I couldn't rhyme anything with individual because I can't think the same thought for three seconds. I'm Rev. I'm Rev and I'm driving a car. I'm getting some gas and I'm buying some vapes and I'm gonna drink coffee all, all the fucking day. I'm Rev. The dude individual. I ain't got shit to do. I just sit around making shit up and waiting for aliens with you. Get on my YouTube, watch all my videos, send me money at my PayPal. I don't want to get a job, and if I got a job, I will freak everybody out. And you know it, I know it, they know it, the ghost of my motherfucking mother even knows it. That bitch is haunting my cat. Drink too. <laughs> Sit down. I need help.